Okay, this lesson for the Corne Project class concerns what can happen to any of us if we continue to go further and further, or that is farther and farther along, uh, that is farther away and further along with our construct. It's called accretion. We just continue to creep. Uh, that is step away, layer and layer upon. We add to so that we can not actually recognize any longer. So in a heated debate that's gone on, not that long, uh, the phrase free will didn't exist till 13th century, but it seems to be uh, very uh, much a catalyst for, econ for the economy. It incites reactions, actions, reactions, counteractions, things like that. So, but in the case, let's say uh, the pastor John Piper, for example, he made a comment that God is the only being who is ultimately self-determining and is, is, is himself ultimately the disposer of all things, including all choices, however many or diverse other intervening causes are. So acknowledge other causes, regardless of how many they are, or how diverse they are. On this definition, which he just constructed it, no human being has free will at any time. Now, he hasn't defined free will. There's libertarian free will, compatibilistic free will. The Second London Baptist Confession 1689 acknowledges free will Adam had. That is the freedom to will, the ability to will to do good. Now, I'm just citing those things. This is not what the point is here. But it says on this definition, the one he just constructed, no human being has free will at any time, neither before or after the fall. So now he's actually ruling out the 1689 London Baptist Confession, or in heaven are creatures ultimately self-determining. There are great measures of self-determination, as the Bible often shows, but never is man the ultimate or decisive cause of his preferences and choices. So now he introduces preferences and choices, doesn't define those words. Preferences is from heresia, where we get the word heresy. Then there's damnable heresies. So preferences is introduced here. Choices, he doesn't define that word, so he's just speaking in the vernacular. So when man's agency and God's agency are compared, both are real, but God is decisive. Yet, and here's the mystery that causes so many to stumble. That's That would be those of us who just can't grasp these constructed definitions and these fallible constructs and these, uh, well, clouds without content, clouds without water. He said, yet, and here's the mystery, God is always decisive in such a way that man's agency is real. So it's real and his responsibility remains. So he seems to uh, present his case as though it relieves some concern that we might have that somehow the Bible might lead us to think we won't be responsible. Yet the Bible speaks of the judgment seat of Christ. Paul spoke of the terror of the Lord being that we must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. He said, we persuade all men. Then there's the white throne judgment, where those, after their judgment occurs, those who aren't in the book of life will be cast in the lake of fire. So there's two judgments, one for the saved, but we're already saved. Then one for those who never believed and were never born again. And obviously, uh, they're not there to find out anything better about their condition, ultimately the lake of fire. So, so we're living in the reality that John Piper has just constructed that perhaps we might not notice man being responsible or culpable, and yet it's self-evident in the scriptures. But what he missed actually was the blunder of not noticing that the Bible specifically uh, identifies in what way is man's causal agency decisive. And in Exodus 4 or 5, there's another video that you all have out there about how biblical Hebrew uh, decisively determines the free will issue. It's solved. It's over. You can look at that at Exodus 4 or 5. But this is just an oversight. It's a blind spot. It's perhaps building an argument. Now he continues to go in that direction because you know, for some people, they can't afford to come back because then they lose their credibility. They lose those who follow them. And there's really nowhere to go because if you go back to the text, for example, uh, my large print study Bibles here. So let's look here. This is in Exodus 4. And if you can read this, this is um, 
the Tanakh Hebrew English. So you have the English on one side and then, of course, the Hebrew here. So on the English side where we read that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob hath appeared unto you. Now, this is Moses needing credibility for convincing the Hebrews that the true and living God appeared to them or appeared to him. So if we go look at the text, let me see, verse five and move over here. It's le ma'an, le ma'an. Now that lamed there, that's according to or for, two or four. So then it's intention. So for the intention that, or yeah, for the intention that, and then it's this word, ya'aminu, ya'aminu. Now that's a hifil, imperfect, third masculine plural. And they actually have Bibles now, if you don't like looking at these Hebrew words and they can become dizzy. It's like snow blindness. But when you target a text that specifically speaks to something that's very controversial, it's worth the time to do it. And they have reversed interlinears. You can go to Bible Hub. They have all of the morphemes there. You go to blueletterbible.org. So we have all types of information. So uh, notice though that what it states is, let me go back. There it is. Verse five. Okay. Okay. For the intention that or the purpose that they might cause themselves to believe. And then this word key, that, that, and then it's, um, yeah, Jehovah God. Yeah, Jehovah God. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, that's Nifal. That's a Nifal perfect. And he has been manifested or he has appeared, stated, let's say, but it's passive, nifal, perfect, passive. And it's from the word see. So he has been seen. Yeah, that may be that we can do that. I don't know. He has been seen or has appeared. I'll leave it at that. Unto you. Yeah, Jehovah God has appeared unto you. So what do we do with that one word that, says they might cause themselves. And what do we do about the fact that prior to that, it says for the purpose that or for the intention that they might cause themselves. And if we define free will, that is, if we use free will as the contemporary translation of causal agency, then we have Jehovah God saying to Moses, Take the rod, cast it down, it becomes a serpent, take it back up, it returns to being a rod, a staff, and do that before their eyes so that they, for the intention that, or the purpose that, they might cause themselves to believe, yes, to believe that it's Yivah, Yahweh, Jehovah God, hath appeared to you, unto you, it's unto you. So how much more specific and what more would we want to know? But if God acknowledges that they're causal, that they have, if we would use, if we define free will as causal agency, and I don't mean libertarian free will, that some assert that they could do other than even that which God knows, or that somehow they're an uncaused causer, or uncaused actor agent because we cause ourselves. So the idea that we don't cause ourselves is foreign to the Bible. And the idea that we would cause ourselves to do something other than what God would in his omniscience know is foreign to the Bible. But in real time and space here in the uh, created world where Moses is existing and here these people are and God's in breaking communicating with Moses. He tells him to demonstrate this miracle, this miraculous act as a means to the end for the purpose that they, those particular people, might be the ones who cause themselves to believe that Jehovah God has appeared unto Moses. So so now we're asked to believe John Piper or Jehovah God, because now out of the very mouths of out of the very mouth of Jehovah God is the statement and acknowledgement of causal agency or 
free will defined as causal agency. So it's really quite remarkable, especially when you study the Bible language. You can see where a lot of the tension and the trouble is. Uh, sometimes people have an aversion. They say, oh, you don't need to know that Greek and Hebrew. I'm like, no, you don't, because hifil is an English word. Imperfect is an English word. Third masculine and plural is an English word. So whether you're ever comfortable with those strange lines and that, uh, which can almost be uh, blinding unless you use a large magnifying glass like my son got for me because sometimes it's too small and it's difficult. But it's worth the trouble because it's a lot more joy to me to, to read what the Bible says than to hear the babble that constantly is published and written and bantered and proffered and presented because really it's a decisive matter according to the Bible. It's it's a determined, it's already determined. And so God said to Moses to take the rod and that staff, that rod, and use that miraculous sign, just like in John's gospel the signs, many other signs did Jesus do, but these particular ones, these scripted signs have been scripted. That is, these particular ones in the Gospel of John have been scripted and remain on record. So there are means to the end also, in order that you might deliberately, causally, that is deliberately, causally, that is, cause yourself to believe. Punctual action, simple form of action, finite verb, aorist tense. That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing, parasynaptic participle. And then we know in 1 John 5, 1, that prior to the participle, we have ganao, that perfect participle there, showing perfect active, and not a participle, perfect active. And it's a verb that that one has been fathered, the one who is already believing, always believing, continuously believing, that's present active participle has been previously fathered and has always been fathered out from God. So it shows that no better description of a person who is a believer, gerundive noun, verbal substantive, uh, could you describe someone as being fathered out from God. But nowhere in all of Scripture do we have fathered preceding the finite verb, believe, aorist tense. And as in Exodus 4, 5, we have causal agency or what we define free will, those of us working in this class using the languages such as church is called out assembly, baptize is immerse, angel is messenger. So we can go on and on and on. When we define our words from the Bible, then we place them in their context. We have a remarkable insight that is afforded us. It's a scripted insight and scripted knowledge. So there's really no choice here. What grounds, cause, or credential would John Piper have that would outweigh on any hand the self-evident, clearly expressed, scripted text of Exodus 4, 5, and then John 20, 31, and 1 John 5. Well, I mean, we just, it's just uh, hard to imagine. Well, not hard to imagine, but it, it's typical of what we were warned about years ago that Things will go so far and we'll continue to try to justify ourselves and we'll continue. And as I was trained, there's project creep where you get so far away from your original project, you may not even recognize what you're working on anymore. Or accretion, you can constantly add and add and add. And we're warned in the Bible not to add to. So this would definitely uh, be a decisive lesson concerning the question of does man have a free will, one, or Two, or do we as causal beings, are we decisive in anything? We are very decisive according to Jehovah God, Yavah Elohim. So I'm not sure who we are even bantering. There's no debate here. So you have a blessed day. Enjoy this lesson. And I'll include some of this verbiage that speaks of this atrocity and assigning to God uh, responsibility as John Piper has, as others have, of even ordaining the actions that involve horrible things that are unmentionable. So you have a blessed day and enjoy the knowledge that comes from the scriptures.